What's up everyone? Welcome back to Quest Mode. Lately, I've been really enjoying Hollow Knight for the Switch, so today I thought it'd be a perfect time to count down the top 10 Metroidvanias for the Nintendo Switch as ranked by their Metacritic score. And stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to be giving away one of the games on this list. Let's get into it. Kicking off the list is actually my runner-up. While Dandara comes in at a measly 72% on Metacritic, I happen to think it's one of the most underrated Metroidvanias on the Switch. It's definitely one of the most unique. You traverse the world using a grappling hook that slingshots you to any area within your line of sight, and the game lacks gravity so you can stand on literally any surface. This makes for some ingenious exploration-based puzzles. That said, I think the reason Dandara isn't rated higher is because the controls can be tough and the combat is really damn hard. The bosses are punishing and there were even basic enemies later in the game that would kill me almost instantly. However, leveling up is a big part of Dandara and once you're powered up, succeeding in battle is incredibly rewarding. I loved exploring this world but only dive in if you really, really like a challenge. Forma 8 is a beautiful and moody game that hasn't received the attention it deserves. It's the perfect experience for people who enjoy the feeling of solitude and who want to explore without interruption. That's because Forma 8 is all gameplay. No dialogue, no tutorials, and very little story. It's up to you to figure out how to use the abilities and weapons you discover to solve puzzles and uncover the stark yet beautiful world. As you can see, you play a robot drone, which definitely sets Forma 8 apart, but on the downside, the movement is rather floaty. Even changing directions can take time. While this style of locomotion fits your character and complements the lonely and surreal atmosphere, it can make backtracking a bit tedious. However, the striking visual style and the way the gorgeous world opens up makes Forma 8 worth the effort. Also, at just 10 bucks, it's a screaming deal. A follow-up to Blaster Master on the NES, Blaster Master Zero is significantly less challenging than its 80s counterpart, but that's where the differences end. Like the original, Zero offers two drastically distinct modes of gameplay. First is the 2D side-scrolling that lets you explore on foot or in your high-jumping tank. Yep, your tank can jump. Your mode of transportation will dictate which areas you can explore. Travel on foot and you can fit into small areas. Use your tank for stronger armor and to reach significantly higher platforms. And of course, you'll discover new powers like the ability to drive up walls, a la Michael Keaton's Batmobile. As for the second gameplay mode, Blaster Master Zero deviates from the traditional Metroidvania formula with top-down action-heavy levels. The level of challenge in Blaster Master Zero never really ramps up, but if you're looking for an easier game that mixes things up and adds some old-school flavor, this might be just the game for you. Tesla Grad is a Metroidvania that uses electromagnetism as its core gameplay mechanic. The fun begins with blocks and platforms that you can move by shifting their magnetic charge. As you explore, you gain new abilities like teleportation and levitation. For me, the key challenge of Teslagrad was in figuring out how the world works. When you reach new areas, you've got to experiment to discover how you can manipulate the physics of the level around you. As for combat, there's not much. The bosses are pretty much the only significant enemies, but at least they're pretty challenging. Figuring out their patterns and weaknesses feels like solving yet another rewarding puzzle. And for completionists, Teslagrad features 36 collectible scrolls hidden throughout the world. And when I say hidden, some of them are really tough to find. This isn't a masterpiece, but for me, Teslagrad's unique magnet and physics-based puzzles made it worth the playthrough. Not since Sonic Spinball has anyone attempted to combine platforming with pinball, but that's exactly what Yoku's Island Express does, and the results are impressive. See, you can't actually jump in this game. You can only use paddles, bumpers, and your limited movement abilities to solve puzzles that are essentially, well, pinball tables. It sounds gimmicky as hell, but it works surprisingly well. 
The puzzle rooms are very well designed and just like a real pinball table, the world is filled with shortcuts and secrets that you unlock along your journey. As your arsenal of abilities grows, you're able to accomplish new feats like destroy elements of your environment or explore underwater. As for the pinball mechanics themselves, they're not unlike the real thing. The precise aim that some shots require can get frustrating. However, unlike real pinball, the difficulty never gets overwhelming as you're never punished for taking risks or simply trying over and over again. On the downside, the campaign is relatively short, but fear not, the secrets and collectibles will give you more than a few reasons to come back. If you haven't played a Shantae game, or even heard of one, you're not alone. It's one of the most overlooked platforming series of all time. And the fact that it sits all the way at number 6 on this list would be offensive if it weren't for the quality of the games that follow. Nonetheless, Shantae has all the trappings of a typical Metroidvania. The world is interconnected and full of secrets, and throughout the 6-8 to eight hour campaign, you'll fight huge colorful bosses and collect new pirate gear that enables you to access new areas. But what makes Shantae stand out is its charm. The writing can be genuinely funny, the music is full of life, and the game never takes itself too seriously. As an example, your main weapon is your waist-length purple hair, and in order to upgrade your attack, you have to purchase shampoo and quote, silky cream. I love that level of quirkiness. Also, come on, the game is pirate-themed. Owlboy shot to near instant classic status when it released on Steam back in 2016, so it was a great surprise when it was announced for the Nintendo Switch. You take the role of Otis, who's half owl, half boy. That alone sets this game apart in that flight is your main mode of exploration. But Owlboy is also different because other than fly, Otis can't do a whole lot on his own. That means you've got to recruit friends throughout the world, each of whom has their own unique ability, usually a weapon, that allows you to solve puzzles and access new areas of the map. And the environments themselves are a joy to explore, whether you're flying around the overworld or working your way through one of the game's puzzle-laden dungeons. The game also features some pretty neat one-off gameplay segments that keep things interesting, and lastly, the heartfelt story and absolutely breathtaking music make for an experience that no platforming fan should overlook. Of all the games on this list, Axiom Verge might take the most direct inspiration from Metroid, at least visually. It also takes a page from the Ratchet & Clank series by placing heavy emphasis on gadgets that give you unique and interesting abilities, some of which are incredibly inventive. Particularly cool is the Address Disruptor, which is a projector beam that changes the attributes of enemies and the world around you. Aim it at parts of the environment to create platforms, or point it at enemies to change their attack pattern, or even turn them into allies. It's something I've not seen before or since in any Metroidvania. Of course, there are plenty of other gadgets, and Axiom Verge does a great job of hiding them throughout the map. Also, some of the bosses in this game are absolutely epic. If you haven't yet played Axiom Verge, and you're drawn to a more sci-fi setting that looks like it was designed by H.R. Geiger, then don't feel bad about checking out this game before any others on this list. If there's one game to thank for the resurgence of the so-called Metroidvania genre, let alone indie games as a whole, it just might be Cave Story. Developed over the course of five years by a single developer and released in 2004, this is one of the first indie success stories of modern gaming. Upon its release on PC, Cave Story earned widespread praise for its excellent level design, heartfelt story, and addictive gameplay. In the game, you'll track down items and unlock new abilities, but most unique to Cave Story is the weapon upgrade system. Common pickups provide XP that power up whichever weapon you have equipped, but taking damage causes you to lose XP that you've earned. In other words, your strength isn't permanent, and how long you keep it depends on your skill. Most impressive about Cave Story is that it still holds up 15 years later. 
That said, I recommend borrowing it from a friend or buying it used because unfortunately it's priced at 30 bucks, which is a bit pricey for such an old game. SteamWorld Dig 2 is one of my all-time favorite games on the Switch. And while it is a Metroidvania at heart, it might be best described simply as one big adventure. The premise is simple. You start out at the top of a mine and you've got to rescue your friend who's lost somewhere deep within. To find him, you've got to dig your way through rock and sediment and this reveals some of the most beautiful 2D levels I've ever seen. From crystalline caves to glowing lava tubes, this game is as gorgeous as it gets. As you dig, you find loot that you can then take back to the surface to level up your equipment and gain new abilities. The gameplay loop of digging, looting, then upgrading is borderline intoxicating. It can make the hours you pour into this game seem like minutes. That, combined with a world that is so beautiful and expertly crafted, will keep you playing until literally every stone is unturned. That's right, the highest rated game on this list is also the newest. Hollow Knight sets you loose on a gloomy and murky interconnected world that's as challenging as it is filled with secrets, lore, and alternate paths. While the atmosphere and visual style of Hollow Knight are one of a kind, the gameplay borrows from some of the best games around. Similar to SteamWorld Dig 2, you'll be collecting loot in a deep and cavernous underworld to purchase items and upgrades. Or, like the Souls games, if you die, you'll have to battle your ghost at the location of your demise to regain your loot. And while you may not die quite as often as you would in the Souls games, the combat in Hollow Knight is unapologetically difficult. But thankfully, it's always a fair fight. All that said, know that this game is so much more than a Souls or SteamWorld dig clone. As you discover new abilities, you're able to pick and choose which ones you'd like to equip. That means you can change your loadout to adapt to certain bosses and environments. It's an incredibly gratifying system. And speaking of gratification, this game is one of the best values in the eShop. You could spend a full dozen hours discovering Hollow Knight's optional areas, items, and side quests alone. And that's on top of the 20 hour main quest line. You get all that for just 15 bucks. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. But for now, it's time for my Nintendo Switch game giveaway, where I'm giving away this sealed copy of Owlboy for the Nintendo Switch. All you have to do to enter is click the Gleam link in the description of this video anytime during the month of July. From there, just follow the instructions to make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Then I'll pick the winner on August 1st. And until then, if you never want to miss one of my videos or one of my future giveaways, all it takes is clicking that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.